everybody, welcome back to more RPG Maker MZ Expert Tutorials. In this lesson, we'll go over how to make custom tile sets for your game, or to import pre-made tile sets that don't already exist in MZ. Let's, let's grab some tile sets from the Visustella MZ sample project. Here's what each file would look like. Now, note how everything is named like, like Dungeon A1 or Dungeon A2. I'll tell you why just by looking at this. Let's take a look by clicking on one of these and viewing it in the image viewer. See, these tiles are animated, and these tiles will move constantly and have a constant animation going on while the game is being ran. We'll go into what happens in this in just a bit. We'll, we'll do this after we place all this in a, in a game. So, what we do is take the tile sets you want, copy it, and then we're going to go to our game. For this, I'm going to use my Super Smash Brothers project. So, we go in Image, Tile Sets, and Paste. There we go. That's that taken care of. Now, let's head to the game. So, what we need to do is go to the database and click on Tile Sets. Let's add a new tile set. How about, let's just add, let's just add one more for the sake of tutorial sakes. There are two types of tile set modes. There's area type and there's world type. World type are for major world maps. Area type are for like towns, cities, and other sub areas. So A1, like I subjected earlier, is animation. So those tile sets are animated. So first we're gonna have to choose the tile set we need. So I'm gonna do the Vigistella Dungeon one. So they usually have marked on which spaces go where. So for dungeon A1, you put it on A1. Next up, the ground, which is an A2. That's, that one is just ground, but it's not animated. A3 are things like buildings and other structures. This tile set doesn't have one, so let's just skip it. A4 are walls. Think about walls of a house or the walls of a cave. Oops, I think I scrolled too far. Ah, there it is, A4. Now A5, the normal one, does not change no matter what you do with it. D actually changes its appearance based on what tiles are connected to it. Like walls will be connected together to make a new tile. So we're going to go to dungeon A5 BS, and that's our first that's our first page done. Now B, C, D, and E are for other tile sets that use the similar thing. So make sure the grouped tile sets are together to prevent clashing of art styles. It, besides, it won't even look good anyway. So we're going to do Dungeon B, V, S, and Dungeon C, V, S. Now let's go over each of these buttons. First is Passage. This, t this one determines whether a character can walk on it or not. So, let's take these structures for example. These pillars a player should not be able to move through. So, if we click on the circle, it becomes an X. The player won't move on anything with an X. But take, for instance, the top of these pillars. We don't want the player to just run into them. That would just make the game feel way too two-dimensional. To make this feel 3D, we'll have to make it so the player looks like they're moving behind it. To do this, change the circle to an X, then click on the X again, and it becomes a star. That means when the player walks over this tile, it'll appear like they're behind the tile, which creates a more 3D effect. Do this with whatever tiles you think are tall and would create a nice effect for the player to walk behind. Some tiles like these doors don't want you to move behind these. Unless you want to create the effect like it's just a door in the background. Same thing would apply to these monuments. Next, let's go over passage for directions. To do this, you need to click on the arrows that will allow the player to move on specific tiles. So, so let's make these tiles be able to be moved in only one direction. 
This can be used to make one-way tiles or, or, or tiles that will only allow you to go up or down or, or left and right. This is used for bridges mainly. Let's see. Which one to use? Uh, ah, the stairs. This is a perfect example. If you don't want your player to move off the stairs while they're on it, click on these arrows. So the player is not allowed to go right on these tiles. I'll just keep doing this for the rest of the stairs. Oh, by the way, multiple arrows can be done... Multiple arrows can be turned off. Like this one-way stair. With this one tile white stair, we could just say the player cannot move left or right on them. And there we go. Now, let's head to the ladder type. To do that, doing these will make it look like the player is climbing a ladder or a rope or vine. By default, this is off. And by clicking on a tile, it becomes a ladder tile. It will look like the player is climbing a ladder with it. Next is bush. These will these will cause the player's feet to be a bit more translucent. This will this is in effect if you're doing this on a on a say an outside area like a forest or something. With this in mind, it's always good to use bushes on any spot you might think a player might be able to you know, like walk into a bush or tall grass like it's Pokemon or something. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. Let's go to the next one. Counters. So, hang on. Let's see what this does. Enables a tile to start an event that is not directly next to it. When a tile with this counter attribute between the character and the events, the event will start as if the character is right next to it, even though it, it would not normally do so. When this attribute is given to a terrain auto tile, it is considered to be a table and will be drawn extending 12 pixels downward. Huh, that's good to know, but that's only for advanced things, and I do not know enough about this. Next up are damage floors. This, whenever you, whenever a player walks on one of these tiles, they'll take damage. Like this one. It'll appear as a spike. If a player walks on it in-game, they'll take damage. Next up is the terrain tag. The terrain tag can range up from 0 to 7. They're primarily used for certain events, but... I'm not sure about what to use for each of these, so feel free to experiment and figure out what does what. Anyway, let's let's put this in action. So I made this map ahead of time. Oops, I forgot to set what tile set is the new tile set. Let's let's edit this and select the tile set. Let's use this. Uh oh, I completely forgot. You can name your tile set too. Let's name this VS Dungeon. All right. Now, let's start mapping this floor out. Alright, let's put that there. Put those over here. No, no, let me undo those. Put that there. Put those over here. This is only for example sakes. See how the tile set makes it look like it's a wall that's seemingly looping around the whole thing? Just like that. Now let's put these tiles into action. Put these here. Now let's put a pillar over here. Now let's add a damage floor, even though it won't look the best. And let's also add a ladder just so we can know what it looks like. So let's set the starting position of the player here. And now to open the game for testing. Oh, hang on, gotta turn off the. Uh, there we go. So let's make sure. So the player cannot walk over this pillar, but the player can walk behind this because we have the star in the passage type. And we take 10 damage for every time we walk on this tile. Oh, and this applies to the whole party, no matter what's going on. See? And it looks like we're climbing this ladder. Hang on, just gotta do one little thing. 
I completely forgot the stairs. If I could find the stairs, firstly. All right, now let's test this. So we need to make sure the player cannot move in a certain direction. Still gotta close the console. So the player cannot move in through there, and the player cannot move out from there. So that's the reason why the four direction passage is there. So we can prevent the player from walking through this, through this tile like it's some sort of invisible barrier. Anyway, let's close the game. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you find some good tile sets out there. But feel free to play around with any sort of tile set you might find around the internet. Or and make sure you know what tile set size is going to be. To do this, you might check around in your system. If I could find it first. System, system, tile set, uh, where is it? This might take a bit of looking around. Types, system two. Ah, here it is. It's in system two. You could have any tile set to be 48 by 48, 32 by 32, 24 by 24, and 16 by 16. The best is 48 by 48, because that's the size of a player character. That also nets the best quality. Most tile sets you'll find around the internet are 48 by 48 per tile. Feel free to use this ratio in mind whenever you're creating a tile set of your own. Feel free to experiment and take a look at the ones that already come default with RPG Maker MZ for an example. Feel free to experiment and have a lot of fun with this new knowledge. This is Windy Wearing, signing off for next time.